start to really blend, and with that, we'll be talking about its mechanical properties and comparing the blender position. So, for the overview for this um, project, we have to we'll talk about the objectives, the region of interest, the workflow, analysis of quantitative data, the changes and the challenges we face, and the conclusion, and probably the next step we'll be going to probably spend our work that we've done so far. Um, so for the objectives, we'll have, um, that's just a clear statement of whatever we want to do and why we are doing this project. And it's to make PLA and paper composite to produce biodegradable utensils, cutleries, and also to increase its biodegradability and strength by adding PLA, or by adding paper to PLA in different compositions as 1%, 1.5%, and 2% of paper. And this will be a better substitute for disposable plastic food packets. Okay, so just the re our reasons of interest why we choose to work with paper is to first substitute uh, non biodegradable plastics. You know, non biodegradable plastics uh, degrade the lands, uh, they, have, they have the bad environmental properties, like they affect the environment badly. They, um, they also are difficult to recycle, you know. So when you make them degradable, you are able to recycle them, and also they are able to, you know, help the land in any way without contaminating the land. Also, there is no money wasted during this project, honestly, because we do we work with paper, which is almost everywhere. And also, paper combustion, you know, paper combustion causes greenhouse effects, you know, with things going into the sky causing a lot of you know, problems in the ozone layer and others. So this is to reduce paper combustion in the environment. Also, we have salty paper cups, especially from Tim Hortons. Me, personally, I get to use salt from Tim Hortons because one will be salty by the end of the day, by the time I get home. So we got to reduce that still. And yeah, for the workflow, I'll leave that to partners to talk about it. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Simran and I'll be talking about the workflow. So basically we have five sub, uh, five, uh, you know, five, uh, five steps that is uh, making of making of paper powder and then blending the raw material and then making samples for the analysis and then carrying out the test and analysis itself. So for making paper powder, we uh, tried uh, blending paper, the dry paper into the blenders that we were provided, but we were not able to blend paper easily. So we moved on to uh, adding water in the paper so that we can, uh, you know, soften the paper and it was way easier. And then we dried our paper on, at 60 degrees of centigrade in the hot oven so that we can have fiber and powder as well. And the next, next step was we added coupling agent with the help of ethanol so that we can treat our paper, paper so that it has a better binding with our PLA. And the third was, uh, after adding coupling agent, we have to dry it even more. So we uh, uh, kept it in oven for the next 24 hours. And the next step is for blending raw materials. We actually tried different methods to blend our raw, raw material, but we were not successful. So first step was, uh, we used injection molding, and in which we added all our raw material which was PEG, PLA, paper, that, is what, that was treated with coupling agent. And then uh, it wasn't successful because the uh, blending wasn't proper. Then we tried, uh, but then we tried uh, mixing it manually, but we were not successful that way either. So we had an option of using hot oil press in which we melted our uh, stuff, and then it came out in uh, form of solid composite, composite, uh, what, what do you say that? Uh, so. It was something like that. It was like cubes and some raw composite. So that we had in the end, and the composition uh, we used for paper was 1%, 1.5, and 2%, as Khan has already mentioned. And we use our hot oil press at 190 degrees of Celsius. And after that, we uh, cut our raw material into smaller pieces so that we can subject it into injection mold to get a better uh, dog bone. So uh, we made dog bones for our sample analysis. So we had uh, we used uh, we made dog bones for tensile testing and impact testing, and then we cut our dog bones into flatter and smaller pieces so that we can use it for DSC and uh, biodegradability. And the next is next is that we were uh, we.
we carried out tests on all the uh, samples that we made. So we did impact test to test the strength strength of our uh, material. We did hardness to test the toughness. That was uh, did, uh, done with Eurometer type B, and then we did uh, DSC, which was used, uh, which was done because uh, because we used lubrication, because we used lubrication, and uh, for lubrication we used oil. So we tested uh, our samples with DSC so that we can confirm if we have any oil in our material or not. And the last thing was biodegradability because our whole project is based on biodegradable pro products that we uh, get in the end. And we also did tensile testing that is one of the major tests for materials but due to some complications in the, uh, in the tensile tester so we uh, you know, neg uh, neglected the results that we had. And now I'm passing on to Blessy for next. Hi everyone. Uh, so till now we already heard about what we've done so far in this project. So, so every project we should analyze the result because then only we will get how 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 was our project? Is it successful or not? Right. So uh, here I am discussing the result, the uh, analysis, the analysis and the result we did in this project. So first test was we uh, impact test. So we all know what is impact test. Impact test we normally conduct for uh, measuring the toughness of the materials. Because uh, when we commercially uh, manufacturing or processing the things, the utensils, we should know the toughness of the material. Toughness is the main property uh, when we use this utensils commercially. So we did impact this. Impact this uh, normally uh, this is a fracture, fracture characteristic property of the material, they measure the fracture characteristics. So uh, we measure the impact energy to fracture or break the uh, specimen uh, in its uniform thickness. And uh, we, the impact, uh, you can see the impact strength of the material uh, uh, in different compositions. The impact, uh, impact strength was increasing by increasing the percentage of the paper. When, uh, uh, from pure PLA to 2 percentage of paper plus PLA, it was increased 25.81 to 58.06. So this was a good trend, we got a good trend that means the toughness is increasing or the strength of the material is increasing with the increasing of paper percentage. Next one we did hardness test. Hardness test is uh, that's inversely proportional with the impact test. Hardness we uh, evaluating the value of uh, hardness value by penetrating the uh, hardness test uh, uh, Shore Bureometer we use here because Shore Bureometer is ideal for plastic and uh, we use the D type because in Shore Bureometer we normally we have A and D type. A type is for uh, soft material, rubber, soft plastic, polyethylene, like soft plastic like polyethylene. But PLA is kind of hard material, brittle material. So we use the D type and uh, the result was we, you, uh, we did the three, four trial. As per the ASTM standard, uh, we have to uh, uh, do the trials. We did the four trials. We can sh clearly show that the hardness of the material was decreasing by uh, increasing the percentage of paper. That is also a good result as we expected. The hardness is decreasing with the increasing the paper concentration. That means I already told impact test is inversely proportional to hardness test and the strength is increasing. That's why we can conclude or we can clearly say that the strength is increasing with the paper uh, when we test the hardness test. So the next test is we did DSC. Actually, uh, DSC is uh, not important in our project because uh, we don't need to any composition or anything. But you know why we did? We use oil. Uh, that was um, that was not in our proposal because uh, when we are blending the material, we had some issues with proper blending. So we add some oil for the lubrication of paper uh, with the PLA and PEG. PLA paper is very low, the paper have very low density when we powder, making the powder. So for blending properly we add oil. So we finally we need to ensure that in our final product we, we don't want any presence of oil. So that's why we did DSC but we can clearly say that we couldn't find any presence of oil. We found only a little difference in that. That may be moisture content. 
decomposition of moisture may happen in that time. Uh, otherwise, the old peaks are same. So we couldn't find any uh, oil uh, in the final product, and it, it is we can use uh, waste cooking oil for blending uh, PLA and paper. And next, uh, next was biodegradability. Um, we did biodegradability by immersing the uh, exact weight of each composition in a water in two months. Uh, after two months of analysis, we weighed the sample uh, by taking and uh, drying for 24 hours. And it, it just clearly see that uh, the weight difference. We can show, uh, see some weight difference. The paper percentage of paper or increasing the percentage of paper, the weight loss also increasing, right? So this is a good trend we got. So the biodegradability, the paper can uh, enhance the biodegradability of the PLA. PLA is obviously PLA is biodegradable, but when we add paper as well, paper is increasing or enhancing the biodegradability property of PLA. Next, the changes and challenges. Our group member Anmol will uh, discuss about the changes and challenges. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Anmol. So I will discuss about the changes and challenges we have faced in our project. As you all know that in our projects we face many challenges and we we do everything to overcome those challenges and lead some changes to make our project successful. So, for the major changes which we made in our project was the tensile test. As Simran already told you that in the beginning we decided to do the tensile test, but due to some reason we were not able to do the tensile test because the tensile machine we were using there was <coughs> Like you can see that there are some 
from the previous group. So we have to make dozens of dog bones before getting actual dog bones. So confusion. Every project should have a confusion. So first confusion is the mechanical strength. So we can say that our product has mechanical strength as Leslie has already told about that. It, its strength is increasing with increasing the paper. So it is capable of practical application. Second, when we are adding more paper, the strength is also increasing. So we can say that paper is paper can be used as a reinforcement to the clearing. And the last one, which was the main objective of our project, was to replace the non-biodegradable food packaging with the biodegradable good option. <coughs> And these are the next steps which we can suggest for our project. First one is that we haven't done the tensile test and we didn't get any good results. So we will say uh, that, that we should do the tensile test as it is a major test for material. Second one, in our project we used waste paper, waste office paper. So we want to say that we should try another type of papers like newspapers, cardboard. So we can check that is there any changes in the results or are these are the same. Third one is the comparing the results of impact test before and after biodegradability test. Uh, the main reason for comparison is just that we just want to check that it's after doing biodegradability test is the uh, strength is decreasing or not because in after biodegradable test weight, uh, weight is decreasing so we just want to check the strength and the last one is that we we can just suggest that more research would be beneficial for making these utensils commercially by doing more research it can be done commercially so thank you very much Any questions for the group? <coughs> Betsy. So, um, the ASTM standard that you use in the impact test, sorry, did you use any ASTM standard for the impact test? Yeah, impact test, we normally in our lab, you using the ASTM B standard for the a, a impact test in ISO one we normally use. So that one is number. Uh, it's a ASTMB B some number, but uh, sorry, we never remember. 